Hey, so I thought I'd take you along on my farm chores today. Just for fun, I'm feeding grain to the chickens. Uh, these chickens are my boys' chickens. Here I am trying to decide what to do with the bones I was going to feed the chickens. Because yeah, we feed the chickens some scraps of meat. Chickens love protein. I'm walking weird because I'm walking in um, double speed and probably because I walk weird in the first place. Uh, something very awkward about watching yourself on video isn't there. Anyways, now I'm feeding the chick other set of chickens and ducks their grain. Uh, we feed sprouted grain and we feed um, regular chicken feed and oop, there's an egg. That's a duck egg. We have six ducks. My daughter actually has them. She's at a friend's house right now so I'm doing the chores for her. But she sells duck eggs for her little side business. And anyways, don't mind the coop. It's pretty haphazard. Um, still didn't get the roof on it. I don't know. If anybody else has a farm, they know what I'm talking about. And I forgot to bring a separate bucket for the eggs. So there you go. And now it's time to go check on the sheep. Uh, this is the breeding group over here, so we have Sox is the ram, and he is a ram lamb, so I'm really hoping that he can get the job done. I guess we'll find out in June if he got the job done. So, now time to unload the eggs, since I didn't think about an egg bucket, and I like to make my jobs as an as inefficient as possible. Lady, don't take the eggs. There I am telling the dog, stay away. So, this fence, as you can see, the snow's too deep and a predator could get in here. So let's just hope some snow melts or I get another roll of fencing up. But I do spoil these, this breeding group with a bit of grain because well, I'm hoping for multiples and that will help multiples and I want to give them a little boost, a little boost of energy for the first month of gestation. So clean out their water so their water doesn't get dirty. You know it. Now to put the eggs back in so you can see how efficient I really am. And I'll just spread their hay out a little bit so they can get at the good stuff underneath. And I'll add a little more hay in there later when I get a chance. Now it's time to check on the other group of sheep. Now this is, these are open ewes. So that means they are not being bred. For one reason or another. Some of them are going into the freezer and some of them are too young to breed and so they just get hay as I waddle my way over there. Uh, the ducks, they don't really like me yet, but the sheep love me, especially when I chuck them some fresh hay and I make their work easy. So there you go. Just another day on the farm. It's been a while since I did a video on here, you guys, and I think I just needed a big break over the holiday to just kind of get clarity on the direction that I want to go with this YouTube channel and even just with our farm and family in general. So I won't bore you with all of the details, but it felt really good to just take a nice long break it's been a couple months since I've been on here as you can see I'm not in my sauna so this is not really fiber in the sauna anymore because as much as I enjoyed making those videos in the other podcast in the sauna it's just not very um, convenient because the sauna is not always hot in the middle of the day so I would be like it, it'd be winter and I'd be out there kind of freezing and anyways you don't really care. I'm just going to back this up to introduce myself. My name is Heather Anderson. Um, we live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We're establishing our homestead here. So as you can see, our house is like super not finished. And 
this is just a come as you are. Like, I'm not into faking it. I, I want to inspire you with beautiful things, but sometimes it's also just real life. And we can be really intimidated to start things because we see all these examples of people um, putting themselves out there on social media and whatnot, and they edit, they edit out the real life, right? And that's not to say that they shouldn't um, keep parts of their lives personal, of course, but um, it causes people to hold themselves back when they think, I have to wait until this perfect day for myself to put myself out there to do something that I'm feeling called to do because I can't measure myself up to this other person. And that's just kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm over that mentality. So I hope you are too. And I hope you enjoy this video. Um, what I really would like to do with my YouTube channel is I've gotten some clarity and I want to be able to provide you valuable content, not just me rambling about Oh, what I've been up to and this and that which can have some value but what I want to do is to like break it down and get super specific to learn something very specific and largely that will be focused on fiber and on knitting and on wool because that's like what I really 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 love enjoying what I really enjoy doing but I may also include like some house projects, maybe some gardening, maybe a little bit of stuff in the kitchen. Um, so I don't know, I'm just pretty open to where this is going to go, but today it's all about wool. And you saw me doing the chores this morning with my son, and or at least part of the farm chores, and I really wanted to share with you guys how I get inspired to do a project. and. What I'm learning about myself as a knitter, as a fiber artist, is that I am a very simple person and I can get very like, I, I'm a very simple person but I'm also very creative and I'm, I'm very inspired by others but sometimes when I see all these like bright and shiny objects, I like, oh I should make that and you know that would be so fun to make, uh, but then I have to dial it back and say, would I really wear that? Like, is that me? You know? So, it's something to think about um, when you're creating, whether that's knitting or anything, any other area, right? Like, that's beautiful and I appreciate that, but is it me? Like, am I really going to enjoy that in my everyday life? After the excitement of the initial creating period is over, is that going to continue being something that makes me super excited, right? Like, am I, am I going to want to put on that garment? Am I going to want to hang that on my wall? And it doesn't have to be that everything you create is perfect and it comes out exactly as you envision. That's not what I'm talking about. It's getting to know yourself in the process, which I think is super fun. And why not? Why not spend your time getting to learn about yourself, getting to know yourself, getting to know your materials, because part of knitting is knowing your materials. And once you pick up any medium, say you're an artist, you pick up a medium, you play with it, it's not very long before you start asking yourself, or at least me, because I'm a very curious person, I wonder how this material was made. I wonder where this material came from. And so when you start asking yourself those questions, sometimes you end up going down a whole rabbit trail. Um, sometimes you end up finding things super exciting. Sometimes you end up finding things that you're like, wow, I just didn't know that. I'm not really that into that, whatever. So wool is a perfect example. And I honestly, I've knit for so many years. And I mean, it was a long time before I really considered where does yarn come from? I knew in my mind somewhere that yarn comes from a sheep, but I couldn't like put a tactical feeling of what of what that actually meant like what is the product that yarn comes from okay so this is shorn off of my own sheep this is shorn off of one of the first first ewes that we got on the farm um, her name is Grace and she has this lovely variegated gray and more 
which is like a tan brown color fleece. So she has spots mostly of gray and a little bit of like dark black, but then it fades at the tips to get you this lovely kind of a more moret color gray. I don't know if you can see that. So when I, when I get inspired to make something new, like I want to fully immerse myself in it and I want to learn as much as I can learn from the process um, about my material, about how it came to be, about myself, like I was mentioning. And so, uh oh, my cat's going for my plants. Hang on one second, I gotta put him outside. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I don't remember where I was going with my train of thought, but talking about the raw material. So it's not very long until I'm like, I want to learn how to spin. So really briefly, my, my fiber journey started with knitting when I was pregnant for my second son. Um, then maybe five years ago or six years ago, I learned how to spin. And then shortly after that, maybe a year after I learned how to spin, we moved to this place that we're still working on. We moved here three years ago. And like one of the first <laughs> thoughts in my mind when we got here was we need to get some sheep. So we got sheep like two months after we moved here. We didn't have a house, we were living in our camper. Um, but priorities, right? We got the sheep and so ever since then, I've been learning everything I can learn about wool, about sheep, and how to process it. Um, we got our sheep f to produce both wool and meat, mainly for ourselves, and to be able to learn about it, just for the experience. So this is a, a lock of wool right here. So this is off of Grace, and I don't know if you can see how crimpy, how crimpy that wool is. And um, this, when she was shorn, this was actually probably kind of her not as nice parts of her fleece because I sold, I sold her best parts of her fleece and I figured I would work through the rest of it to hand process myself. So, the other day, I feel like I'm going on many rabbit trails, but the other day, my son asked me if I could make him some socks. He's my oldest. And my boys helped me a lot on the farm and with chores and just with a lot of things. And so usually when they request something, they don't request something very often. And I know that when they do request something, it's usually because they really want it. Like they don't usually make tons of requests for knitting because they know it takes me a long time because I'm not a very fast knitter and anyways. Um, so he asked me for socks and I thought this would be a good project to share with you guys because I could show you how I take a raw material like this and turn it into a finished finished product. So I'm not going to be able to complete the whole thing on this first video, but maybe this will be um, three videos in this series showing you how I turn raw fabric or raw material into socks. And so I'm really excited. So I'm going to show you guys some basics on spinning. Um, this fleece is already washed and I have a video on my YouTube channel on how I wash my fleece. Um, I have changed some things um, from that video, so I should update it a bit. Um, the main thing being how long I let the wool sit in the water. I don't let it sit in 10, 20 minutes each round anymore. I move it out in um, 10 minutes because I find that the lanolin, the lanolin doesn't need 20 minutes to come out of the fleece and if the water starts cooling down it actually will retain a lot more of the lanolin but anyways that's not what this video that's not what this video is about I wanted to show you guys how I spin from a, 
a lock, okay? So before I get into that, I'm just gonna show you, my plan with his socks is to use two different kinds of fiber and to really just work through my stash of fiber because I have a lot of raw wool and some roving that I need to work through. So this is 100% alpaca that I got from a friend's farm and I will include the name of the farm and where you can purchase this amazing fiber from um, in the descriptions. So I do have a spinning wheel, but I learned how to spin on a drop spindle and I used the drop spindle for probably three or four years before I bought a spinning wheel. So if you're interested in learning how to spin, the best advice I can give you is to purchase a drop spindle, simple drop spindle. This is from Snyder Spindles on Etsy. It was maybe $20 and I love this spindle because it's a medium weight spindle. It's an easy one to learn on. Um, it, was, it very easily makes you like a worsted weight type of style of yarn, which is what I knit with a lot. So when you're just learning to spin, I recommend you start with roving, which is what this is. This is roving that I purchased from directly from a farm, as I mentioned. And so it's already processed. It's a lot more processed than this is, right? Because this I had to wash myself and I have to kind of cart it myself and I'll show you what I do with that. So if you're just learning, I suggest starting with roving and there's, there's a ton of videos on YouTube to teach you how to spin. This isn't what this video is going to be exactly. If you haven't had any basic knowledge of spinning, pick up a drop spindle, pick up some roving, and you play with it. In order to use up some of my stash is I'm going to use alpaca on the bottom. Alpaca is typically a very hard wearing fiber and it will felt pretty easily. And I don't mind if it felt on the bottom of the feet as long as it doesn't felt too much that it doesn't fit him, right? But it, it, as it felt, it gets stronger, it gets tighter, it becomes a, it becomes a more sturdier fabric. So I'm just spinning this and my plan is to double ply this. And I, when I ply this, which I'll show you the plying and the dyeing in the next video, my plan when I ply this is to ply it pretty tightly to make a very sturdy sock yarn because I'm not using any superwash fibers like most people use superwash fibers to make socks. I am going, and these are going to be a really thick socks, probably a worsted weight socks. So these aren't going to be your typical thin fingering weight socks. My boys are really into hunting and trapping and ice fishing, so they need, they need warm duds, right? And we live in northern Michigan. It's really cold for most of the year, so cold and snowy. So that's some basics on what I'm doing with this alpaca, right? Super simple. Now for the fun part. I think this is so fun. To take this into this and to eventually take it into this. This I spun on my, um, <laughs> mind blank. This I spun on my um, spinning wheel for a different project and I'm gonna share with you guys um, more intensely about that project later. But this is what I'm hoping to create, except maybe not quite as bouncy, maybe a little more tighter spun, a little more of a, a worsted spun, so to get more strength for the socks. So I don't know if you can see how variegated that yarn is gonna, going to be. This is off of here, and all I'm going to do is to take, you could use a dog brush for this, I have these hand carters, and you can find these on Etsy, the original Howard Brush Company. But you could literally use um, a simple flick card, it's called, and that would be cheaper. Or you could literally use like a dog brush. And all I'm doing is taking my lock, and I'm holding it together so that it doesn't come apart when I pull it through these teeth. And I'm opening the ends. I'm opening the ends of the fiber. So it looks like this. And then I'm gonna do the same to the other side. 
And what that does, if there's any second cuts or maybe a little bit of hay or straw or oats or anything in the wool, it will fall out. And it creates this really lofty, if you compare it to this, it's actually very similar, right? So I just did what the mill does in a bigger um, volume, but in a very short time. I created this okay so now what I'm doing you could spin right you could kind of draft this out pull this out to create kind of a long a longer piece of roving but what I like to do is to keep it in a bundle fold it over my pointer finger in my non spinning hand and I will join and spin right out of the fold. This is a technique that I kind of recently picked up and so I honestly don't know exactly what the results will be. It's kind of part of the process of learning and I figured the socks would be a good thing to practice on. One thing I want to do this year is to become much more intentional with my spinning and with my knitting as I was saying earlier and to to have sort of a, a loose plan in mind and to not just be like creating this huge stash of hand spun yarn for my cupboard that I may or may not ever get around to using. So you can see I'm literally just pulling right out of that fold. And there is, there's a little bit of lanolin left in this. So it's creating a, a very strong yarn but I'm kind of trying to control the thickness. This, this yarn is not going to be super consistent. I can tell that already. Probably mostly because I'm new at this technique, but I'm okay with the yarn not being super, incons super consistent. It'll, look, it'll still be perfect for socks. So because this wool is a finer wool, my sheep are definitely on the finer end range of the microns but the upper finer end, like 25 microns or so, like 20 to 25. So there, it's really soft, like next to skin soft, but not like, not as soft as something, you know, it's still hard wearing, it'll still hold together. And which is what I love because of our lifestyle. I need, I need a wool that can kind of do it all. It's soft enough to wear without being irritated, but it's not so rough that it's scratchy. And it's just an all around nice fiber to work with. So as you can see, it's super easy. Even though I'm slow, it's relatively easy. And if you're brand new to spinning, you're not going to get consistent results on the first try. It's going to take you a while to learn how to do it. I just kind of want to show you, I wanted to let it twist back to show you, give you an idea of what the yarn is going to look like when I ply it. So it's definitely a fairly thick yarn. It might even be thicker than worsted, which I'm okay with. So once I fill up this spindle, I will unroll this and I'll fill up another spindle and then I'll ply it and I'll show you the plying in the next video. And I'll probably show you the dyeing in the next video also. Um, another good resource that I wanna mention before I am done is this. For those who really want to get into spinning, especially if you wanna get into spinning from the raw, so like raw, fleece right from the farm this is a really good resource because it goes through a few of um, the more common breeds and then it, it gives you ideas on ways to process so using this to open up the locks is just one way of processing um, fiber raw fiber there's many other ways to do it and so that book kind of will give you a bunch of ideas of different things you might want to try based upon the type of wool you have, because if you didn't know, there is many, 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 many different types of wool. When you think of a sheep, you might just think of that little white baby lamb, but a sheep is actually so diverse. There's so many different breeds 
um, and they're bred for so many different purposes, and there's, <laughs> it's crazy how, once I learned about them, I was like, whoa, blown away, but anyways, get your hands on some raw fleece, get your hands on a drop spindle, get your hands on a dog carter, get your hands on some roving, and have fun playing. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. Um, I will be sharing, in the next video, I'll be sharing color inspiration, I'll be sharing how, t how I dye my wool, and I will be sharing how I ply. So we'll be making the yarn in the next video, and then after that, we'll start knitting. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Talk to you later.